already then. Greetings, guys and gals. This is Steve, and you're tuned in to Mike and Cam. And this is a new episode of Mike versus Mike. The competitors today are the Rode NT USB and the HyperX Quadcast. So let's get into it. First, accessories. The Rode NT USB is equipped with a table stand. It looks a bit like this one. It is plastic, has rubber feet and is pretty flexible. Then we get a booklet, a sticker, hell yeah, and a leather pouch. No real leather though. Additionally, we get a pop filter, a windscreen, however you want to call it, this thing. And we get 5 meter USB cable. The HyperX comes equipped also with a table stand. It looks a bit like this one. It is solid aluminum, pretty heavy and absolutely sturdy. This is a really nice table stand. A quick start guide and greeting cards. There is also a USB cable which measures 3 meters and we get a shock mount. Oh yeah, and a mounting bracket to mount the microphone to a microphone arm. I would say the first point goes to the road because of the windscreen, the longer cable and the leather pouch. What about the build quality? Both of these mics are made of metal, I guess the HyperX is also made of metal. Uh, but it is out of very, very thin metal. I guess it is aluminum. Um, if you dismount it from the table stand, this thing weighs almost nothing, about 270 grams, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, the Rode NT-USB, on the other hand, is pretty sturdy. It is super heavy. It is made out of thick aluminum and overall it feels much more sturdy. What I don't like about the NT-USB is um, the, the mounting bracket, which is pretty fragile to say the least. The mounting solution on the Quadcast is much more durable. What about the usability? Both microphones are USB microphones. They are simply plug and play, no additional drivers needed. And the settings are, yeah, more on the HyperX Quadcast because you got um, the switch for mute, you got a dial for the level and you have four different polar patterns to choose from. The Rode on the other hand has a headphone jack, exactly the same as the HyperX but on the Rode you can dial in the volume of this headphone jack and it has an additional dial to dial in the volume between playback from the computer and you're talking into your headphones. So you can say, I want to hear simply only the playback from the computer, let's say this music or a game sound or something, uh, and you don't want to hear your own voice, you can do that by turning this knob all the way to the computer symbol. If you don't want your game sound in your headphones and only you're talking, also no problem, turn the dial in the other direction. So you have only your voice and no playback from the computer. The USB connectors on both of these microphones are pretty okay, I guess. The Rode has a pretty old standard Type A USB connector and the HyperX Quadcast has also a pretty old standard, it's the Mini USB. Uh, the problem here is, um, on the HyperX Quadcast, the both connectors for headphones and USB, the two jacks on the backside, are so close together uh, that the two plugs if you plug them in simultaneously they will have full contact this is not too bad but it also isn't very good so if you use this for a long period of time it may be it may be lead to some problems contact problems in one or both of the two connectors yeah let's go over to sound testing now i'm about 1.2 meters away from the anti-USB and now I'm also about 1.2 meters away from the HyperX Quadcast. Now I'm about 50 centimeters away from the anti-USB and now I'm also about 50 centimeters away from the HyperX Quadcast. Now I'm about 20 centimeters away from the anti-USB and now I'm about 20 centimeters away from the HyperX Quadcast. And now I'm on full contact on the Rode anti-USB and now I'm on full contact on the HyperX Quadcast. One major difference here is the pop filter. If I pop into the anti-USB, this is no big deal because the pop filter works pretty well. If I pop into this microphone, 
no real issue. On the other hand, if I pop into the HyperX Quadcast, the popping noise is pretty present. It says it has an integrated pop filter, but this pop filter isn't really working so well. What you now hear is the noise floor of the two microphones. The level of both of these microphones is set to 80% in Windows. Um, the HyperX has this little volume dial on the bottom where I can change the, the volume of the microphone. If it is on 100% like it is now, the level is 0 decibel. And I can turn it down so the microphone gets quieter. This is the Quadcast getting quieter and quieter and this is the lowest setting. What do I think about these microphones? The sound of the Rode NT-USB is, yeah, it is really good. I really like the mid-tone frequencies of this microphone. The high end could be a little bit more defined and the low end is okay. It isn't too bad. It is not too low, too quiet or too loud. It is all right. It is the Rode NT-USB, what should I say? The HyperX Quadcast, on the other hand, is um, a bit different. Not much, a little bit. The high end is slightly boosted and so is the low end. And this leads to, um, to a sound profile, if you want to call it that, that is a bit more modern sounding. It, is, it sounds cleaner, it sounds a little bit fuller. Um, but there is a very big drawback on this microphone. This microphone has a whining sound. I think you already heard it in the noise floor test. It has this... <sighs> yeah, exactly that. The NT-USB on the other hand has nothing of this. It sounds just clean. No noise, no whining, no hissing, no something. Just the normal noise floor. Accessories, build quality, and functionality, I think I have to give this all to the Rode NT-USB. It is a close one, because the Rode has the pop filter, which works, and the HyperX Quadcast has the internal pop filter, which doesn't really work. But on the other hand, the HyperX has a pretty nice shock mount, which the Rode doesn't have. But the NT-USB has an internally dampened uh, membrane. Uh, the, the mounting on this thing is made out of very, very soft rubber and this helps eliminating some of the rumbling noises when touching or walking by the microphone. Specs-wise, these two microphones are also pretty similar. They both feature 16-bit bit depth and 48 kHz sampling frequency. Um, they both are condenser microphones. The Rode has one capsule, the HyperX has three capsules and these three capsules are the tiniest amount bigger than the Rode one. The Rode one is a 0.5 inch and the HyperX is a 0.55 inch, I guess. 0.5511 if I remember correctly. It doesn't really matter. Both of them have a frequency response from 20 to 20 kilohertz and that's about it. Uh, the Rode states a maximum SPL of 110 decibel. The HyperX doesn't talk about that. So no no really comparable stats here, but the main features as the sampling frequency and the frequency response and the bit depth are absolutely similar. On your first million, the Rode NT-USB will set you back around 155 bucks, whereas the HyperX Quadcast will set you back around 134 bucks. Yeah, if I had to choose, it would be a tough one. For me, as an audio guy, the sound quality is crucial and since the HyperX has this whining sound which drives me crazy, it, is, it isn't too loud. You won't really hear it all that hard, um, but I know it is there and on my headphones I can hear it. And at least for me, this is a no-go. I would absolutely 
take the Rode NT-USB. Next week, I will compare the HyperX to the Blue Yeti Nano. I guess now you know everything there is to know about these two microphones and you can now make a decision if you want the Rode or the HyperX. If you have any further questions or if I forgot something, just write a comment. And while you're down there, consider subscribing, thumbing up or thumbing down. You know how that works. Yeah, my job is done. That's it for today, but I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.